Welcome everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I will be doing the full head-to-head -head comparison between two awesome Samsung budget phones. This is the Samsung Galaxy A11, and this is the slightly higher tier Samsung Galaxy A21s. I'm going to compare these phones in terms of specs, overall performance, the speed, what comes in the box, the photo quality, and pretty much everything you wanna know about these devices. So this is going to answer a lot of your questions. Let's get to it. These devices share a lot of the same features at a glance, such as the hole punch cutout in the top left, a rear place fingerprint scanner, headphone jack, the placement of buttons, and they have the micro SD card slot, which I really still appreciate in late 2020. Both have large capacity batteries. The cheaper A11 has a 4000 milliamp hour cell, whereas the A21s is a thousand milliamps larger at 5000. So you already know this far into the video, I am not gonna be complaining about the battery life of either phone. What you will see later on though, are my screen on times for both when I use them pretty much the exact same way. The A11 has a 6.4 inch TFT display with an impressive color gamut, and it's only two pixels per inch shy of what we have on the larger A21s. Now 268 pixels per inch versus 270 is obviously indistinguishable, and so is the size difference between the panels. What I did notice was that the A21s display gets further dimmed down into low brightness than the A11. The more expensive phone also sports a TFT panel, though at 6.5 inches. I have owned these devices for months now, and they've picked up some scratches. I can tell you that there is a minor difference in the way damage is perceived on the plastic finish. The matted corners of the A21s show scratches and wear less than the A11. Although both of these units are the black color variant, around back we have a gray metallic shine for the A11 and my favorite, the clean rainbow A21s without stripes. Interestingly, both have the option to use the face registered biometrics for the lock screen security, and I opt for this on most of my Samsung phones, but it's just taking a 2D image. So if security means a lot to you on your phone, I personally would not go with this route. I would do the fingerprint scanner method. I'm glad to say these scanners are the exact same speed very fast. Neither of these biometrics are mandatory. If you don't want to, you don't have to scan your face or put in your fingerprints for the fingerprint unlock. For packaging, inclusions do vary based on your region, but here's the rundown. Both have an adaptive fast charger with two amp output. This is the standard USB-C to type A cable, and neither device has wireless charging in case you're wondering. Despite the large batteries, the charge up times with the included adapters were quite impressive. They arrived packaged with the SIM card tool and the same earbuds that are also found in the higher tier Galaxy A31, so that's a nice touch. I'm picking up all these stuff to review for you guys. There is no sponsors behind the channel, so if you appreciate the content you're seeing, make sure you're subscribed and also leave a thumbs up on the video. Let's talk about the batteries now. I already mentioned that there is a thousand milliamp difference between them, the A21s being the larger one, but here's the breakdown of how that looks at the end of the day. On the A11, my screen time totaled 8 hours and 56 minutes of use, across 2 days before it powered down. This is definitely enough to get the average person through a day of casual use, considering for the first 5 hours, I didn't even use dark mode, my Wi-Fi and Bluetooth were on the whole time, and I did some gaming too. Turning off oncoming alerts from apps that constantly pull data such as Instagram and Facebook will give you these longer usage periods. The A21s improves on the A11's time, giving 8 hours and 51 minutes across a couple days, with comfortably 12% battery remaining. When pushing the battery to deplete, you can get 9 hours and 15 minutes of screen on time with this phone. Let's talk about the speed and the performance of both phones, and how they compare against each other. Now, note that the A11, the cheaper phone of the two, actually packs a Qualcomm Snapdragon 450 chip. This is paired with the Adreno 506 graphics, whereas the slightly more expensive device, the A21s, is rocking Samsung's own architecture. This is the Exynos 850 chip. The Exynos 850 inside the A21s is paired with the Mali G52 graphics, and in short, the practical difference between these two chips is not big. I'm going to do my speed test, starting with the boot up of course. You'll see how these devices stack up against each other in terms of tasks that you'd perform every day. The boot up test win goes to the Galaxy A21s. I closed all apps between both phones to ensure accurate results. My speed test started out with the web browser, which went as expected. The A21s took the slight edge, loading pages faster. 
my tests for opening apps was a big surprise. In many instances, they were a split second apart from each other, and many times the cheaper A11 won. Take loading up the game Asphalt 9 for example. This was a curious case where the Qualcomm chip in A11 exceeded my expectations. The YouTube app was the exception here where the A21S took the win loading slightly faster. I thought for a second my animation scaling was unequal, but that wasn't the case. Both chips are limiting me to gaming at medium settings. High quality in the case of Asphalt 9, but you can't go all the way up to high or max on most titles. The gameplay is good in these settings. I'm someone who's too cheap to pay for a console, so trust me when I say these are good enough to keep a casual phone gamer satisfied. Overall, I experienced less frame drops in games on the A21S, but the practical difference isn't enough to give a significant competitive advantage, and as you saw, sometimes the A11's Qualcomm chip actually outperforms the Exynos 850. Seeing as how the predecessors of these two phones, the Galaxy A10 and the A20S, both got a whole Android iterational upgrade, I'm very confident in saying these two phones will get Android 11 in time. Now let's just hop into that camera comparison. We've got an array of three lenses on the A11 and four lenses on the A21S. They only share one lens in common, that's the least interesting one, and it's for depth scanning. The phones take use of this for the live focus mode, which is kind of like portrait mode. The other two lenses on the A11 are a 5 megapixel ultra wide and the main 13 megapixel camera, which is wide by nature of its focal length. You might be thinking, 13 megapixels doesn't sound all that impressive. And you'd be right, the photos actually do reflect the spec sheet. Here it is next to the 48 megapixel main camera lens of the A21S. On here, we also have a better 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, and the fourth lens is for macros. We've talked before about these uh, macro lenses that Samsung puts onto a lot of phones now. They're not really all that impressive, but once you do have them on your phone, you're going to be inspired to go out and actually take macro shots. The main lenses compared to each other reveal the extra budget that goes into manufacturing the A21S goes a decent way to improve photography. If this is important to you, do take these samples into account. All across the board, the win goes to the more expensive phone with no shock. Colors, sharpness, and dynamic range have seen an improvement from the lower tier to the more expensive phone, and I would say if you're using your smartphone camera a lot, this could be a good reason to spend the extra money on the A21S. Oh, and while we're at it, I'm going to show you my selfie comparison. You can be the judge of which phone's front camera won here. Speakers on the A21S are more muffled than the A11, and the A11 suffers from tinniness more than the A21S, so they're both kind of uniquely trashed in their own way. Garbage, one might even say. But I mentioned this in my reviews of both phones, and I mean, at this price point, can you really still complain? If I could only have one of these two devices and budgeting was a factor for me, I would actually go with the A11. I know a lot of people were not expecting that, but it's simply because the flaws of this phone I can get over, such as the camera. For me, it's good enough that I can send photos to my friends, and for social media, I'm using my professional camera most of the time, almost all the time anyways. Like I said earlier, I would greatly appreciate a like on this video. There's going to be more coming your way about the A11 and A21S on my channel if you request it in the comments, but if you want to see anything else that I've covered in the past or just something entirely different, go ahead and leave that down below. That's it for today's episode. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.